Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss about the input buffering concept. So this concept belongs to compiler design subject. So we will see the definition first. In lexical analysis, the source program is read character by character. To make this efficient, we use input buffering. Remember one of the important point. So what is the purpose of lexical analysis? It is used to read a character by character. Okay. From source code, lexical analysis will read character by character. So in order to make this program efficient, we will use the concept called as input buffering. Remember, input buffering used to improve performance and reduce overhead. Okay. It is used to improve the performance as well as used to reduce the overhead problem. Now you can see I have taken some simple program that is int main just a simple program I have written int a comma b a is equal to a plus b close bracket. So now you can see this is the program how it is going to store it in the memory. Now you can see this is the program now this is going to store in the input buffering. So remember here we have written the program int space ma in open bracket close bracket. Now remember in order to store the data in the input buffering it uses two pointers. First one is called as bptr. bptr nothing but begin pointer. fptr it is nothing but forward pointer. So here begin pointer and forward pointer as is there. So in this how the program is going to run or you see now here let me take the example of this one already we have written in our book. So this is int main next open bracket close bracket then this is called as input buffering memory. Now you can see how it is going to execute, how it is going to perform in the memory. So this program, how it is going to store in the memory, I am going to explain by using input buffering. Now you can remember there are two things. First one is called as begin pointer. Second one is called as forward pointer. Okay, so initially forward pointer and begin pointer location is same. So over a period of time, the value of forward pointer will be incremented. Now it is going to change. Now the value of this one is n. Initially the value of BPTR and FPTR is i. Now it is incremented by next position. Now again it is incremented. Okay, now FPTR value is T, but if you see again it is going to increment by 1. Now you can see it is going to increment, but if you see here we have some space is there. Now what is going to be happened? This int, this is called as something like a lexim, it is going to store in the symbol table. So remember important point, it is going to store in the symbol table table. So this int is going to store in the symbol table. Okay. So now what is going to be happened after completion of this one. So here it is going to identify as a keyword then it is going to store in the symbol table. Next after completion of this one this is completed. Now the location of this one is FPTR. Now the location of this one is BPTR. Okay, so now again the position of FPTR will be changed here, then here, then here. If you see here, it is N, okay, M A N. Next, when it comes to here, FPTR, this is called as special symbol. So, when it finds a special symbol, again it is going to store in the memory. Okay, so like this, it is going to store in the symbol table. 
so this is called as what we say input buffering so remember in the input buffering what is going to be happened i will explain again this is very simple process so the value of bptr fptr is initially same so over a period of time file pointer will be moved here and moved here and moved here when it finds the space it is going to think it is called as int it is a lexeme we can also say this is keyword now the value of bptr fptr comes here so now when it comes to this one this is a bptr again file pointer moves moves so here when it comes here file pointer it is going to check this main is called as which is related to the it is going to stored in the symbol table so this is how the input buffering is going to store very very important concept this question will come in the examination point of view also now you can see how it is going to in the input buffering now you can see there are two mechanisms are there in order to perform input buffering first one is called as one buffer scheme second one is called as two buffer scheme what is one buffer scheme only one buffer is used okay if lexeme is very long then it crosses the boundary to scan rest of lexeme the boundary the buffer has to be refilled so one of the important point you must remember whatever the program is there so in the one buffer what is going to be happened you can see here there is a big program is there so in this in one buffer we are going to store the value still main but if you see in this we are going to have the program something like i have written already i will write now again int main then int a comma b a is equal to a plus b now in the one buffer what is going to be happened let us take one buffer scheme now so remember again int main let us say the data will be stored till here okay so now this is called as what we say begin pointer this is called as forward pointer remember in the one buffer scheme again file pointer will be incremented again it will be incremented but when it finds the space what is going to be happen file pointer now you see the value of file pointer is space so when it finds the space it is going to think the int is going to store in the symbol table so in the symbol table it is going to store the int now you can observe so here after completion of this one the bptr location and fptr location comes to this m so now fptr is going to increment 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 so here this is a process to store the data but if you see i need to store this uh, values this open bracket into abc all these values so in order to store all these values what i have to do in the one buffer scheme it is having only one memory so we need to rewrite this values again because of it is having only one memory so int now it is going to store in the first the it is going to store open bracket then again it is going to store i then it is going to store in then it is going to store t then it is going to store a comma b so this is a process this is called as something like a re write or you can say something like a overwrite now you can see what is mean by this uh, one buffering so in this only one buffer is used if the scheme is very long then it crosses the buffer boundary to scan the rest of the lexeme the buffer has to be refilled okay so it stored only int main so rest of the code i want to store so this code will be erased this code will be overwritten so this is called as what we say one buffer scheme now you can see what is mean by what is the uses of one buffer scheme 
so the buffer scheme first one uses r it is useful when the data is very small disadvantage over writing okay so one of the disadvantage of one buffer scheme is over writing but when you look at the two buffer scheme what is going to be happened it uses two buffers so it is going to store large amount of data okay so now remember in the one buffer scheme there is a drawback called as when the data is very big it is going to overwritten but in this what is advantages are there so now you can see this is a one buffer this is a two buffer so i am going to store the data in two buffers so what are the uses of this two buffer schema it uses it reduces the number of system calls and disadvantage what is the disadvantage for two buffer scheme if the size is if the size of memory is too large it consume more memory okay so when the size is more it consumes more memory okay so this is all about the input buffering if you have any doubts you can ask me thank you for watching this video please subscribe my channel friends